I'm John Haas. With a background in sustainability and a passion for fishing, I travel the world to showcase the good, bad, and ugly around sustainable fisheries. Haas Off the Grid uses the excitement, adventure, and direct connection to nature inherent to the sport of fishing to show the need for stewardship. I go off the grid to show some of the world's greatest fish and fisheries, creating awareness about the threats to their status and promoting a conservation ethic. We have too much power over what lives and dies on this planet to not care and take ownership. Together, we can make a difference. On this trip, we'll be checking out the largest estuary in North America, the Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay stretches from Maryland in the north to Virginia in the south. It has more than 150 major rivers and streams flowing into it as it connects them and their anadromous fish to the Atlantic Ocean. Known for its beauty and its bounty, the bay has become a shell of what it once was, with native oyster populations down to 1% of their historic population over the last 130 years. The impact to the bay is substantial, as these bivalves contributed heavily to keeping the bay water clean. Today, commercial oyster farms are contributing to restoration of this capability, but commercial harvest of wild oysters still continues today. The same can be said of Menhaden, the largest source of forage for the bay's predators. The bay's historically huge population of Menhaden has now dwindled to a small remnant of what they once were, due to industrialized commercial overfishing taking over 80% of the commercial catch for the whole east coast from within the bay and around the mouth of the bay in Virginia. Instead of providing the base of a robust ecosystem in Chesapeake Bay, these fish are now harvested for a commercial reduction fishery to make fish meal, fish oil, and fertilizer as an industry, instead of being managed as part of an ecosystem that depends upon them. People are fighting to change the status quo and restore the bay and its ecosystem to what it once was. We'll sample the fishing and talk to the folks that are fighting to turn the tide on the destruction of the bay and its Menhaden population. Hey, it's Haas. I'm in Virginia on Chesapeake Bay, and we're gonna do some incredible fishing today. I'm here to go meet my guide, so walk with me as we come up and meet Chris Newsom. Hey, Haas, how are you? Great, I'm doing great. Chris, this is awesome. All right, well, looking, looking forward to getting you on the bay. Awesome, you know, Chesapeake Bay, you know, you grow up and you learn about Chesapeake Bay and all the history of it, but until you're here, you don't realize how big it is and how, how much it stretches out and there's little fingers and all <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. And all the history around it, oh, you know? Oh, yeah, been a big point of interest ever for hundreds of years, you know? Right. Captain John Smith settled Jamestown, 1607. There's a place called Stingray Point where Captain John Smith got stung by a stingray just over here. And Gwynn's Island was the last place that the British stayed on oh, really? as far as when they uh, were Occupied. defeated in Yorktown, oh, yeah. Wow. Got him out from there. That's, that's the last right. That's right over here. You can see it. That's great. <laughs> so, Chris, what do we got in store for us today? Well, we're going to slip out and uh, see if we can chase down some striped bass. Okay. Get them on the fly. So, we'll, we'll give it a go. All right. Stick around. Hoss off the grid. We'll be right back. Coming up, we'll be checking out the Rappahannock Oyster Company and seeing the impact that commercial oyster farms are making on restoring the water quality of the bay. We'll talk to folks about the impacts of the commercial reduction fishery of Menhaden and the industrialized methods they use in and around the mouth of the bay. And of course, we're gonna get on some bay striper action, so stick around. More Haas Off The Grid coming up after the break. It's a Dawn Patrol for us as we try and make some bait to use to get the fish excited enough to bring them to the surface so we can cast a fly to them. It's getting harder and harder to find Menhaden in the bay in recent years due to commercial overfishing, and today is no different. After spending a considerable amount of time searching for a sign, we finally find a small school of Menhaden to try and cast a net to. We finally got a few to put in the bait tank. Now that we made some bait, let's go see if we can find some fish. Now that we're on the spot, let's see if we can get some fish excited and raise some to the surface. One right oh, out 
Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. That's there a pitch. Yeah, there nice is. shot. Yeah, that was a money shot right there. That's sweet. All right. That's what we're talking about. A little surface action, a little schooly fish. They're nice. Good way to start the day. Just kind of waking up as they're waking up. All right, let's, let's, let's switch. What do you think? You want to switch over? I think yeah, they're going to go. They need some subsurface. Yeah. That was kind of a, we're throwing poppers, but man, they just are really reluctant to eat it, and they're short striking it. There Here they go. come. There's one. Oh, yeah. Nice. You kind of want to give it a second to let that first wave of fish come through, and hopefully there's a bigger set of fish underneath. This one looks like it's a little bit bigger than that other one. It's definitely stand down. Not pushing it around. Ah, oh, beautiful way to wake up and start the day. Hooked up on a nice fish. And yeah, this one's definitely bigger. All right, Chris. Good job, Hoss. Yeah, yeah brother. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, nice chunky fish. Yeah. Not too bad. Good stuff on the seven weight. Yeah. It's a good match for the seven weight. There was no moving them around. I wasn't like just torquing them. You can't. You play them out. All right. Beautiful little fish. All right, let's do that again. There's there you one. go. Oh, that's a better fish. A definitely there we better go. fish. There we go. There we go. All He's right. Take straight Sweet. Fly line. It's real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good fish. That's sweet. <laughs> All right. Stuff. Good job, Chris. Good stuff. Definitely strong. Stronger fish. You know they're stronger when you pull up on them and they're just not moving. <laughs> they just kind of do that little head wobble and just go their own way. Go their own way. There's no, no horse in there. No, there is not. There he is. Oh, yeah. That feels good. Yeah, I can't beat that on the seven. No. He's coming. Definitely coming to the boat now. Nice. Nice chunky guy. Yeah, that's a good fish. Perfect companion for your seven weight setup. Nice, healthy Chesapeake Bay striped bass. That's the beauty. Hit that fly like it was coming out of nowhere, coming out of, uh, coming out of hibernation starved. We're gonna let this fish go. All right, she's a beauty. Man, you can't, you can't even drop a line in the water. I had your fly hanging over the side and we got a fish on. Yeah, that's a nice, nice place to be. All right, this fish is probably ready to go. One, two, three. There she goes. Woo! Coming up, we'll take a quick lunch break at the Moa restaurant at the Rappahannock Oyster Company and check out their oyster farming operation. We'll also take a look around the mouth of the bay in Virginia to see what's happening with the commercial Menhaden reduction fishery practices. And of course, we'll have more striped bass action in the bay, so stick around, it's just getting started. We're in Chesapeake Bay, fishing for striped bass. We're taking a lunch break at the Moa restaurant to fuel up and check out the oyster farming operation at the Rappahannock Oyster Company. Hey, it's Hawk. I'm here with Anthony from Rappahannock Rivers Oyster Company. And uh, we're here to talk about the sustainable oyster operation you got going on. The company itself is uh, actually about 116 years old. Wow. Uh, still family owned and operated. You grow the oysters out here in the water, right? We do, yep. So we get seed oysters from a hatchery. And uh, we start them in our nursery when they're about the size of uh, one millimeter. And once they're about the size of a quarter, we put them in cages and take the cages and set the cages on our grounds. And that's where they grow out for the remainder of their, um, their grow out. When we harvest it, it's about two years. So it's a lot of pain, a lot of time you have to invest in that. It is, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of labor, a lot of time. So Anthony, what kind of oysters do you guys raise? So we grow the Chrysostria virginicus, 
uh, or the eastern oyster, um, which is actually the only oyster you're allowed to commercially harvest from Maine to Florida. In the Chesapeake Bay, the, uh, the, the biggest issue is the uh, runoff from homes and the, uh, the farms, the crop-based farms, pig farms, chicken farms. Well, all the um, nitrates in the water cause Nitrates, algae phosphates, yep, cause these algae blooms. So when people say the Chesapeake Bay is polluted, it's, um, it's a slightly different kind of pollution than you might see in like Long Island Sound. Um, you know, so you look at the amount of oysters we're putting in the water. Um, last year we put in 14 million. Uh, this year will probably be close to 16 million. Um, it's a lot of water that's being filtered. Hopefully the, you know, the sustainability aspect of what we're doing takes some of the pressure off the wild stock. Again, allowing it to right. hopefully rebound and, and get back to a point where we can sustainably uh, and um, properly manage it. Let's go take a look. Let's do it. This is where we do all our harvesting and husbandry. Basically each morning we start with a harvest. The guys go out and they bring in market cages, which is essentially a cage like you see here that should just be chock full of oysters that are mature, ready to go. They've been tumbled, sorted multiple times over the, the grow out process. They're counting out every oyster and uh, hopefully each one is perfect, makes the grade, and then it's packed up, shipped out today, and we'll go and we'll ship them overnight. They'll show up on your doorstep the next day and you can enjoy oysters uh, 24, 48 hours out of the water. This is the finished product. This is my favorite way to eat them when somebody else shucks them and sets yeah. them down in front of you. We have a Rappahannock, sweet and buttery. These are Tangier Island oysters, uh, which are pretty pretty special oyster uh, from Tangier Island. And then it's middle salinity. And then here um, we've got our old salts, which are grown off of Chingateague, just off the Atlantic Ocean. So that's about as briny, as salty as you can get. So sweet, salty, saltiest. Anthony, yep. really appreciate Pleasure it. Pleasure having you. This is great. Rappahannock Oyster Company? Rappahannock Oyster Company. All right. Cheers. See ya. They only hang in here on the outgoing tide. They come in, flood tide. You must like one side of it better than the other. Yeah, yeah, just the way the current kind of comes around this bend off this point here, flows on out the river. You ready, ready to see if anybody's home? See if anybody's home. All right, dude. So you want to see if anybody's home? <laughs> Ring the dinner bell, ding, ding. Got all this candy for you. Come on. Come on, baby. There you go. There you go. Somebody's chasing. There they are. All right, they're here. All right. There's one. A dog. There's a fish. <laughs> All right. All right. You were right, Chris. Yeah, man. All right. Maybe stripers here. Good tugging fish. Oh, nice schooly sized fish. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and bring them to you. All right, awesome. we're on. <laughs> That's the way we like to do it. That's sweet. <laughs> sweet, dude. Nice, Chris. Awesome, man. Awesome. Let's check it out. A nice Chesapeake Bay striper. Schooly sized fish. Just a great way to spend the day catching nice stripers like this. We're going to let this fish go. It's ready to go. All right. All right. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Awesome, man. There you go. There you go. There's one. Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Cruiser. Cruiser. All right, they're turning Good on Good fish. Now, guys. Man, that's a better fish. That's definitely a better fish. She just. Good head shake. We know something's going on. Yeah. All right, fish. All right. Let's see what you got. It's not over in this bay. There's still good fish in here. Oh, yeah. We're out here to do this with Chris. <laughs> you just got to know where they are and how to get them, man. Yeah, that's right. Chris Newsom, bay fly fishing. <laughs> Love it. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that feels so good. Nice little fish. Good fly rod action. Yeah. Awesome. And when they come up and the schoolies come up and pound that, you just got to give it a couple seconds later for the big one to come up. This Eco Moment is brought to you in part by the CCA. I've been hearing a lot lately about issues and proposed changes to how the Atlantic Coast Menhaden fishery is managed and decided to check it out. My first stop was with Rich and Brame with the Coastal Conservation Association. 
to get a briefing. The Menhaden industry is one of the, the oldest industries. Uh, when we got involved in the late 1990s, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission had just gotten their management authority to, over, to have some authority over managing Menhaden. And we saw immediately that their, their Menhaden management board, which is usually comprised of scientists and state fishery directors, had the Menhaden industry sitting on the board that managed them. So we set about as our first goal, changing the management of Menhaden to everything else, which we succeeded in the mid-2000s and got a cap on the harvest in the bay. And now we have a, a, a allocation by state. So slowly but surely, Menhaden is starting to be managed. Menhaden is especially important because they convert sunlight into protein. They, 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 they are the, the, the key link in the chain. And we're managing them like we manage striped bass, bluefish, single species management. And the problem with the Menhaden is they are a lower trophic order species. I mean, they're, they're, that's why there's a bunch of them around, because their role in life is to be eaten. In that sense, every Menhaden matters. It's not like there's surplus production and there's excess fish. Every fish, even, even if it's not around to, to, to add to the spawning stock, which is the key measure we look at in models, it's there to be eaten. All the Menhaden matter. You can say what they want, they are at a, low, uh, a lower level of abundance than when, certainly when I was a kid fishing the tops of beads. We used to just see school after school of Menhaden go by, and you just don't see that anymore. Yeah. About 80% of, of the allocation of the coastwide Menhaden harvest is allocated to the state of Virginia. And most years, they catch the majority of that in the lower bay. So there's the question of whether or not, you know, those removals, if they were done over the entire coast, would certainly have less of an effect than they're done in a certain, a very small area, which is near the mouth of Chesapeake Bay and up in the bay. We don't know if that's a problem or not, but common sense would tell you that it could be. After listening to Richen's alarming briefing, I wanted to see for myself how localized industrial fishing methods were affecting the Menhaden in the east coast of Virginia off the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. Right now, we're about 70 miles from Reedville, Virginia. We're off the eastern shore of Virginia. The entire hull of that boat is full of Menhaden. The company that, that owns that boat will catch about 400 million pounds of Menhaden in Virginia this year. They didn't come out here 70 miles because the bay is full of Menhaden. The bay should typically be full of Menhaden this time of year. However, there are none. They'll take and pull nets around the entire school of bait. Anything that's around that school of fish will get captured in their nets. See how the water inside of that net looks brown? And all them birds, there's tens of thousands of pounds of menhaden in there right now. Essentially, anything that swims that eats menhaden is around these schools of menhaden. Everything gets squeezed together, and everything that's in there gets compressed together and dies. We see a complete decimation of our fisheries in Virginia because of this right here. Those menhaden look like they're four inches long. They're killing them before they even get a chance to spawn. If you look scientifically, Menhaden recruitment, which is the number of small fish entering the bay, has been down for about 20 years now. They really have not shown up in the bay like they used to, and that's what really fuels you know, our striped bass population, our speckled trout population. So it's, uh, it's been a real concern for us for a long time, and it's why CBS has been involved in this issue. There's at least enough evidence that shows us we should be concerned about the number of Menhaden in the Chesapeake Bay region, and are there enough to serve that ecological role uh, to be eaten by all those other those species that want to eat them. Now we need to bring the best available science in there and, and think about managing this as a forage species because it is so important out there in the ecosystem. Um, and that's not to say we can't have a fishery, but uh, we need to make sure we do it in a manner that doesn't negatively affect all the other important connections of menhaden in the food web. We have a real opportunity to change things for the better. Before it's too late, we urge you to tell the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission to manage Menhaden as part of an ecosystem, not just as an industry. There we go. Here's one oh, yeah. right there. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, this is a good fish. It's definitely a good fish. Keep my line out there. Oh, yeah. Wow. This might be the biggest one yet. Let's hope. It's a good fish. Wow, that's nice. Nice chunky strike. Underwater shot of that. Yeah, that's nice. Got it. You don't want to lose them now. <laughs> you don't want to lose them now. <laughs> that's nice. That's right now. Oh. There you go. Hook fell right, right out. Did it? Awesome. <laughs> Look at that. That's a nice chunky fish. That's like 10.
10 pounds. Yeah, beauty. Good, nice fish. That's a pink bay beauty. Ew. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let this fish go. Did you pull that rod out of there, Chris? No. Yep. Gently revive him, put him back in the water. And this is the funnest part, catching these fish, is letting them go. You know, releasing them in good shape and letting them fight another day. This is a beautiful fish. All right, this fish is going home. One, two, three. There he goes. All right, nice. There's yeah, one. Oh, get that this. Was a good yes. one. That's All a good right. one. That's what we're looking for right there. Oh, he's taking off. <laughs> that was cool. He just blew up on that thing. Oh, this thing is a strong big fish. Might get up next to him, get the reel and stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to just keep him out of the rocks. Oh, he came off. Damn it. Chris, that was awesome, dude. Uh, got awesome. us in there. Yeah, it was a pleasure getting you out there, man. It's nice to get somebody on the boat knows how to sling a little string, you know, get a little <laughs> action. So that was, that was a blast. Yeah. It was a blast. It was, it was, it was great, great meeting you and uh, showing you what the Chesapeake has to offer. Your reputation precedes you. Very personable guy and very knowledgeable. And you took us out there and got us on those fish. I was very, very impressed. And I, you know, and I got to say, um, you know, when people want to come out here, I highly recommend give Chris a call. All right, Chris. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Thanks, man. Take care. John Haas, Haas Off The Grid, HaasOffTheGrid.com. Go check it out because it's got it going on. This is a little theme song for the show.